Hello everyone, we are learning the lesson measurement and today we will study about floating and sinking. Why do objects float on water and why do some objects sink in water? That is what we will be studying today. Now the question that would come in your mind is why do bodies or objects float or sink in liquids? Like a boat floats on water and a stone or a rock would sink in water. And you know that when a body is immersed in a liquid two forces act on it. Okay, First the weight of the body acting downward because of gravity we name it as W1 and the buoyant force which is acting upwards we will name it as W2. So there are two forces acting on a body. Floating and sinking. Why does this happen? Because of the gravity there is a downward force. Right? That is because of gravity. And there is an upward force which is known as buoyant force. Now these two forces play a very important role in letting an object to float or sink. Let us see the conditions for floating and sinking. The first one is when the weight of the body is greater than the buoyant force. Let us take a stone or a piece of rock. When it is dipped in water, what happens? It goes down, right? It sinks down. What's the reason behind it? Because the downward force is more than the upward force or the gravity is more than the buoyant force, right? The downward force is more, that is W1 is more than W2, which is the buoyant force. And so what happens? Body sinks. This is condition number one. Let's see condition number two, the second condition. What happens when the weight of a body is equal to the buoyant force? Let us take an example of ice cube. When it is put in water, it does not sink down, right? It floats a little. It floats. When does it happen? It happens when the gravity and the buoyant force is same or the downward force and the upward force which is the buoyant force is same. In this case, body floats just below the surface of the liquid like you can see the ice floating just below the surface of the liquid. Let's see the third condition. What happens when the weight of a body is less than the buoyant force? Let's take an example of a boat, paper boat or a real boat. Now you would notice that this paper boat floats on the water. What does that mean? It means that the upward force is more than the downward force right the upward force is more than the downward force so in this condition what happens body will float partially immersed in the liquid body will float just a little will be immersed in the liquid therefore when the downward force is more than the upward force that is buoyant force the body sinks down and when the downward force is equal to the buoyant force what happens? The body just floats. And the third condition, when the downward force because of gravity is lesser than the buoyant force, the body floats partially in water. A body will float in a liquid if the weight of the liquid is displaced by it is equal to its own weight. Now this is the principle of flotation. Okay, I will repeat it once again. A body will float in a liquid when will it float in a liquid if the weight of the body displaced by it is equal to its own weight now this is called principle of flotation I hope you have understood till here now weight of the body is equal to the weight of liquid displaced Okay, when weight of the body is equal to weight of the liquid displaced, 
capital V by small v is equal to small d by capital D. What does this represent? This means that volume of floating body by volume of displaced liquid is equal to density of liquid divided by density of body. Okay, so this is what the principle of flotation is. When the weight of a body is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid. Let's see some of the applications of principle of flotation. Now the question is, a nail would sink in water, but a huge ship would float on water. Why ships keep afloat while a nail of iron sinks? What is the reason behind it? There might be a reason behind it, right? Let us try to understand this reason. Now ships float because they displace enough water for the buoyancy force to be greater than the force of gravity. Okay, that is acting on the ship. That is why the ship floats. That is buoyant force is equal to the weight of ship. Okay, that's the reason why the ships float. On the other hand, nail sinks in what? Why? Because its volume is less than its mass or gravity is more than its volume. That's the reason why the nail sinks. Okay, because its volume is lesser than its mass or we can say that gravity is more than its volume where gravity is greater than the buoyant force. That is why the nail sinks. Let us see the second application. Icebergs float in seawater. Right? You must have seen in television icebergs float in seawater. What's the reason behind it? It floats because the density of ice, which is 0.9 gram per cubic centimeter, is a little less than the density of seawater, which is 1.02 gram per cubic centimeter. This is the reason why icebergs float in water. There is difference in the density of ice and seawater. That's the reason why iceberg floats in water. Let us see some more applications of principle of flotation. Hydrometer. Now what is a hydrometer? It is a device that is based on principle of flotation to read the relative density of the liquid directly. Okay, so this is what a hydrometer is. A device based on principle of flotation to read the relative density of the liquid directly. Now this is what a hydrometer looks like. Okay, and these are the parts of the hydrometer. Reading is taken at the point where hydrometer stem floats in liquid. It is dipped in the liquid. Okay, there's a graduated stem. There's a float which makes the hydrometer to float. There are some special hydrometers which are designed to test whether a battery is fully charged or not. These are known as acid battery hydrometer. And there are some special hydrometers which are designed to test whether milk is pure or not, which is known as lactometer. Okay, those hydrometers are known as lactometer. Let us understand about relationship between density and states of matter. Let's talk about solid first. Now, when a solid is heated, it expands and its density decreases. You know about it, right? But when a solid is cooled, the density does not change. Let's see about liquid. Now, when a liquid is heated, its density becomes less until it changes into a gas. But when a liquid is cooled down, the molecules become denser until it freezes. Now let us see about gas. When the gas is heated, its volume increases and the density decreases. And when a gas is cooled, its density increases. So this is the relationship between density and three states of matter. I hope you have understood this. You can go back through the video and see it again and understand it and keep studying and keep learning.